Hi, welcome to the podcast. My name is Father Bill W. I am an Episcopal priest living here in uh, beautiful Austin, Texas, and I've had the gift of recovery. I'm into my 49th year. Uh, so uh, senility has set in, but uh, I'm doing, doing the best I can uh, to enjoy the ride. And um, my story is that uh, at 20 years sober, I underwent a, maybe a second uh, ch really uh, change experience in the program. Uh, where I got introduced to the history of AA uh, by an archivist and um, really turned my life around and uh, sent me in a different and deeper direction. And that's what these podcasts are an attempt uh, to help people with, to, to really do two things. One is to uh, learn a little bit more about the history and uh, where AA and the 12 Steps came from. But the second is also as important, and it's... Uh, to find a spiritual path that takes us deeper. And so we're exploring uh, Carl Jung and uh, some things of that nature uh, kind of come at it a little bit differently and seems to be helping a lot of people and uh, uh, hope we can uh, hear from you on, on how you're liking it. And if you got any ideas on uh, some, I, some concepts that we need to explore, uh, please write me. You can get in touch with me at Two Way Prayer at gmail.com. Uh, we, we, we just finished a, a workshop on uh, the 12-step history uh, last Saturday, and then our next workshop is going to be on Saturday, December the 11th uh, from 10 to 12.30 p.m. Central Time. You can get a, uh, uh, information on that on the Two-Way Prayer website, so check that out. Also, sign up there for our newsletter. So that's most of the business items I wanted to take care of. And in this series, uh, we are exploring the book Invitation to the Great Experiment by uh, Thomas E. Powers. And as you probably know by now, uh, Tom helped Bill Wilson write uh, the book 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, which is extremely important uh, for uh, people in 12-step recovery. Uh, also helped Wilson in the writing of AA Comes of Age, the second edition of the big book, and then uh, many articles uh, in the grapevine and published uh, a news, uh, well, a newspaper newsletter, I guess, uh, but it's a beautifully done newsletter. I've seen some of the copies in the, in the 70s, early 70s, I guess it was, and a little later, um, going deeper into spirituality. And my guest, uh, for this series is Matt D uh, from upstate New York. And, and Matt uh, knew Tom very, very well and is in charge of Tom's archives and working hard to get um, some of the material that, that Tom worked on out into the world uh, to people in recovery uh, who want to go deeper on their spiritual journey. So welcome, Matt. Good to have you back and uh, appreciate your being here. So, yeah, nice to be here. Good. Uh, so we're going through Tom's book section by section, and uh, we did leave off last time uh, finishing uh, the, the part one uh, without a, a couple of chapters being referenced. And, and in, in preparing for uh, this interview, uh, I went back and those chapters are important. So uh, I really wanted to spend a little bit of time before moving on. Uh, to cover those. And, and they really deal with, uh, the first one deals with three ways to knowledge about God, the way of reason, the way of faith, and the way of experience. And I, I thought I'd kick it off, each one off by reading a little quote that Tom has from the book, and then turn it over to Matt and have him guide us through it. So this is on the way of reason. And Tom says this, he says, Nearly all men reason about God. The unbeliever reasons against him. The believer reasons for him. But no one except an idiot can escape reasoning about him. The atheist, least of all, can avoid reasoning about God. His whole position depends on it. So there is no question as to whether we should or should not or will or will not reason about God. The only question is whether we will reason well or reason badly. 
So what's been your experience on reasoning your way to God, Matt? Yeah, I was just thinking while you were talking this thing about um, uh, sometimes atheists are some of the best reasoners that are out there. They're very yeah. sharp at it, you know, and, and yes. uh, many times when, you, when an atheist has, has that breakthrough, uh, man, are they, uh, they are, are <laughs> become very interesting people. I mean, um, Tom was one of those kinds of persons, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I think the thing, uh, um, this is where you got to start. You know, you start in the way of, of re using your reason. A reason is a thing. Uh, you can't be neutral when mm. it comes to reason. You're going to be reasoning. You know, it's just it's it's built into the human person. Uh, a lot of times they say, you know, in the 12 step thing, they often tell people and, it, and, and there's you understand why. But they basically say, look, kid, shut up, stop thinking and just do what you're told. Uh, there's something to that, but yet at the same time, you're never going to suspend reason altogether. It's, it, it is a question of whether, as it was mentioning here, whether you're reasoning well or, or, or reasoning badly. Exactly, know? exactly. Or, I remember, you know, the 20 questions about alcoholism, you know, do you, do you drink in the morning? Do you crave uh, all, all that stuff? The 20 questions. Uh, somebody did that about thinking, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and I think it's a beautiful, beautiful example. You know, do you crave a thought at a certain time of day? Do you find yourself thinking more than you used to? Does your family complain about your thinking? <laughs> so we do yeah. it whether, whether we're told to uh, or not, you know, it's going to happen. And I think one of the important things about reason is we remember that we're, first of all, reason is, it's, it's a tool, you know, it's like a car, you could kill yourself with it, or you could use it for, for great good. But we're talking about reason here, after we have approached the idea of trying to practice rigorous honesty on a daily basis, we're talking about reason after we, we meet, or, or, or trying to meet or seeking to meet the right people and to incorporate the right books and to work on ourselves. So that's how we approach reason here. And that can uh, be helpful. That can be helpful. Absolutely. And it yeah. will also be aided and supported by those other resources. Right. Uh, without them, I mean, an addict reasons, I mean, they're, they, they, you know, most of their reasoning, reason powers is being used towards, you know, where am I get, when am I going to get the next drink or how am I going to get it or how am right. I going to get myself out of the jam? Yeah. This is, this is coming from a, a um, reason that at its center is not egotism. You know, is there really a God? Can I know him? I mean, this whole book is questions in that way. Yeah. And the first place you hit it at is reason. Uh, it's it's a fairly superficial part of the man. There are much deeper parts, uh, but you can't do without it. And that's where we get lost in 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 comparing reason to the next one, which is the way of faith. And and let me let me do a little quote here from Tom, and then I'm going to ask you to comment on it. He says, "Faith is the power to contact the truth." to recognize and accept the truth, and to trust and follow the truth when it is not yet perceptually evident or logically demonstrable. Yeah. Unpack that for us, can you? Yeah, well, I would back it up first and just say that he goes out of his way in this section of the book to differentiate between belief and faith. And I, yes. I think sometimes we get really, um, oh, they get conflated, or we just don't think very much of what they mean. I don't, you know, right. and it was right. this, it was his definition and the one that you read that I that, that really kind of set me straight in a way. Um, mm -hmm. Belief is to accept the existence of something. You know, I, I believe in the Eiffel Tower, I've never seen it with my own eyes. Right. But I believe that that such a thing exists. Faith, as, as you were reading there, it's the power to make contact with that that is the truth, to recognize it, accept it. And this, I think, is the key word of what faith really means, to trust it. Not to understand it. Correct. Correct. But to enter into a relationship with it. And, and to trust it. And to trust it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. 
I have no idea how the, you know, how a bridge is made, but I, right. when I cr cross over it, I'm exercising faith in, in, in those that built it, uh, in the vehicle that I'm in, you know, I, this is trust. <laughs> I have some trust. Right. The thing about it is it's, it's innate in a human person. There is something that yeah. is going to, that, that must trust. Uh, I, now that said, I'm not saying that trust never, never wavers. I think when trust wavers uh, or is low, you have depression. Mm -hmm. uh, when trust is misdirected, when trust is in yourself, which it always is before addiction and always, you know, is what the work and the program is about is to, is to uh, rat that out in ourselves and, and, and develop uh, trust in God and the principles and the virtues of the of this way of life. And I think it's important where you uh, bring in depression. It's, and it's because faith is like pulling you forward. Depression, yeah. depression yeah. is pulling you backward. And then trust in oneself is, is usually the prerequisite of anxiety. Yeah. You, you're just, you're, you're running your own thing. And, and man, is that a hard number? Oh my God. Tell me about it. Yeah. 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 And as we do, and I do it every day. <laughs> I do it every day too. It's That's always, it. you know, That's anxiety it. in that sense, is always a third step issue. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. Uh, I love yeah. this, this, this scripture, scripture quote, you know, Adam's in the hiding in the bushes after he screwed up, you know, and, and he, he notices he was naked. It's the awareness of sinfulness, really. Yeah. It's not, not the yeah. nakedness. And yeah. God, yeah. God, God's comment is so beautiful. Who told you you were naked? Yeah. I yeah. mean, that's where you start to see the split in, in, in the human mind. You yeah. know, the, the, the faith is one thing, and then guilt and fear and all of that other stuff is a whole other direction. Uh, and it's because I'm not related rightly, as you're saying, to the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Tom keeps going back to that truth thing, doesn't he? Yeah. It's, there is just huge. no it's way just around huge. it. Yeah. No it's way huge. Around it. it's, it's kind of like step one. You know, there's no way around step one. You can have philosophical discussions about two, three, nine, 12, and all that good stuff. But if you ain't got one, if you haven't been hit over the head, uh, yeah. they're going to be quite shaky. Yeah all those other well, steps so it's crazy. also some many of these very key essential things turn into lofty ideas if you don't start out with where the hell am i at right now yeah you, you know want my here's my opinion <laughs> yep. here's my opinion on this that or the other thing you know yeah give me your experience yep. give me your experience uh, it's a whole different deal which brings yeah. us to number three so we did yes we did the way of reason the way of faith and then uh the way of experience is the third one that he uh, he takes us through. And, and here he quotes a Hebrew sage. And the sage says, he who has not tasted does not know. Who has not eaten is not satisfied by conversation with him that has eaten. Who has not drunk, his thirst is not quenched by the narration of him that has drunk, who has not experienced the experience of another does not profit. Yeah. So the, the way of experience. Yeah, this one is, I mean, obviously is super right. uh, huge for, for us, you know, yeah. in the fellowship. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think, you know, this, this section is called the ways to knowledge mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, the, the biblical understanding of, of knowing, you know, Adam knew Eve, right. and she conceived and bore a son, right? You know, to know is to unite with. I don't think it's coincidence, you know, first of all, this fellowship basically was born out of a, of a uniting of a, a unbelievable, you know, way with Bill Wilson in the hospital, you know, this, <laughs> he has this uniting with God himself mm -hmm. in this transformative way. And th that, that experience, you know, it, it, it obviously it, it was a conversion. It transformed his entire life. Um, and 
we always go to the, I mean, I, I tend to think of, and I'm sure you do too, the, the experience of Roland Hazard with Carl Jung. Carl Jung's quote, and you probably know it better than I do, but it's something of when he was asked, to, you know, do you, do you believe in God? Right. And he says, uh, I don't believe, I know. And Wilson said the same thing, you know, he tried to get over, under, around, anything but go through. And it's yeah. only in the going through. It's only in having that experience. And this is what uh, I think we miss. Uh, and one of the things that history really uh, uh, taught me is that the whole purpose of the 12 steps is to enter into an experiment that leads to an experience. Yes. yes. So when you're at step one, you need to keep focused on step 12 because that's where you're going. Yeah. yeah. And again, you, you mentioned it in a few podcasts it's about this thing where the, the original step said, having had a spiritual experience, you know, this, they were so unbelievably serious right. about that. I mean, that, that was uh, all the way back from the Oxford group. Like if you went to talk to somebody and they said, did you do your, your quiet time? And if right. you said no, they said, there's nothing to talk to you about. <laughs> <laughs> go, do, go do that time. Go but I have your... a problem. Don't you want to hear my problem? <laughs> go have your experience. Yeah. You know, because it, 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 it's so amazing what, what happens, like your, your relationship to your problems. After you have an experience, it's not that they don't exist. It's just. That's right. So, sometimes they just. It's not even part of the equation anymore. No, you know, you've had, you've had an experience of the be <laughs> the beyond that is within. Yeah, and that yeah. changes everything. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't change the externals, but it yeah. changes the internal, and allows yeah. me to go through. Gives me the courage to go through. I'm not alone. Yeah, I'm not yeah. alone. Mm. Yeah. And they were, and they took again, uh, you know, not to belabor this section because there's other parts we want to get to, but uh, you know, Tom was around for everything from, you know, Bill and Bob uh, messing around with, with the other worlds, you know, LSD experiments and all of and these seances things. and Ouija boards and, and the whole thing, the paranormal and all that. Yeah. The, they came out on the other end, uh, you know, knowing that, 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 uh, that that was not just too broad, but also that they were borrowing against their own future. And there's some very dangerous stuff involved. They went into it, not like, a, not foolishly. And, mm -hmm. um, and I think that's why they were, they came out of it uninjured. Um, but that said, they were, they were so hell bent on the idea of spiritual experience that, that they were actually pursued it regularly. They studied it, they experimented, they right. talked, they worked. It was their central aim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and w Wilson, Wilson thought he would be remembered for uh, some of his work in those other areas more so than uh, he, even AA. You know. Yeah. He was always searching for that. Something changed him, and he was desperately looking for things that would change others. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's good. I mean, it, he was an edge guy. He was always out on the edge, you know. And we yeah, wanted and I, to, we wanted to put him on a pedestal, yeah, which is not yeah. where he belongs. Yeah. Well, I think what happened is he had this unbelievably profound experience, and then they, you know, his his genius mind. And again, I mentioned this before, but I think he went back and and said, "All right, how do you? What precedes an experience of this right. of this magnitude? How do you how do you evoke?" this you can't you can't make god give this to you but what are the conditions and what are the <laughs> things that you do yeah. to evoke to evoke spiritual experience and that's what the 12 steps are yeah starting it's, with one get getting the bottom knocked out of you exactly and it and it isn't we're not talking about sobriety here no 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 we are not talking about sobriety no, we're talking about suffering and and then and then the ultimate you know the the fulfillment if you will uh is experience Right. As and as a means for union, intimate union. Yeah. Or or conscious contact with right. God. 
God is the aim. Yeah. So speaking of that union, uh, Tom lists four um, very classical stages of a spiritual experience. And we, well, let's run through these briefly. Uh, the first is awakening. The second is purgation. The third, illumination. And the fourth is that union that you're talking about. So yeah. awakening, awakening, some contact with the divine uh, that, that, boom, wakes me up, at least initially, eh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's our, that's the, that's the word we use now in the 12th step is awakening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it is amazing how, God, I was thinking about this, how asleep you can be to mm -hmm. just basic reality. I bet you there is a decade of my life where I didn't notice a flower, a bird, right. you know, like, I mean, possibly I did, but if, if so, it wasn't able to punctuate through into my memory, right. you know, like right. it's amazing how asleep we are, never mind to God or his reality, yeah. but just the basic things, other human beings, everything is an extension of my own ego and desires and, and I, and I see men, as it says in the scriptures, like trees, you know, I don't even see the humanity. I don't see anything. Right. <laughs> That's, That's a right. condition of sleep, which is where we really, we start. Yeah. Uh, well, and we it, start out in death in a way, and we, and then we, we move on to sleep. Uh, yeah. In Texas, when a conversation starts off, how about them cowboys? You know, you, you know, it, uh, the, <laughs> we're going to stay asleep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And our hope is to is to move towards awakening and, and at least to to live in a state of being that is 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 close enough towards awakening that we don't return to right. our addictive substance or behavior. And then what's purgation about? What happens there? As Tom talks about it as the cooking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I think this is this is the process that happens to everybody when they right. come in and 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 begin the process of waking up is purgation. I mean, you've got to, the impurities have to be burned out of you, mm -hmm. you know, and you're carrying a, a lot of them, a lot of them with you, you know, and, um, and a lot of times you go back, I think you might mention it here that, you know, you, you may fluctuate in between, you know, purgation yes. and, and awakening and, you and know, sleep you may, and sleep <laughs> and sleep. And then, you, yeah. you know, then awakening again. And, that's right. Uh, but purgation is necessary. There's just no way to move towards further development or union without yeah. it. Yeah. Robert Johnson has a union analyst has has a wonderful expression for it. He he says it's boiling in the oil of transformation. Yeah. Yeah. You know, boiling in the oil. Have they you have had an, had enough? No, I don't think I've had quite enough. Okay, further boiling is required. Yeah, yeah. The Sanskrit word for boil is is um, siddha, which also means perfect. You know. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, and that's that. God is perfect, and that's the direction towards which we will boil. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> and. And if there's any impurities, they will get burned out. They will point. be burned out, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, and uh, in the Catholic faith, they even even uh, even after this, if you ain't clean enough, you're going to purgatory. There's there's For a whole purgation. Realm. We got a whole, a whole realm. realm. That's it. Yep. That's it. Then yeah. comes illumination. Illumination. What, and yeah. that comes from within. Tom says, it's like yeah. a light, a light that starts shining from within a person yeah yeah well again I, I i know it's an experience but i think very much what happens is when you do have experience a lot of times it, sh it shows you what illumination looks like your face changes yeah people notice you and and yeah. it's and it's a and it's a kind of uh and i don't want to get above you know we keep talking about honesty that's why i think it's important that we the book is punctuated with the with all these constant reminders that honesty like i don't want right. to at all claim any uh, any higher heights than i than than i deserve here you know yeah. uh but i think illumination is like a food you know when you dip into that man it can sustain you 
Uh, right. not, not that you do it for that reason. Like, Oh, I'm going to have this experience. And then I got it made in the shade from, from thence forward. No, no, no. no, but when, when you happen to be graced enough to, to break out into something like that, it, it, it sustains you in certain ways for the rest of your life. But we see it in other people. You think of the Quaker? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. His book is wonderful. So, oh, testament to is it testament to devotion? New devotion, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's about the inner light, the inner light. That's what yeah. he talks about. The yeah. inner light. Uh, I'll put that. It's a wonderful book to read. Some people. I'll put it in the show notes. Uh, it'd be a good one for folks to get to. I'll also yeah. put in the show notes uh, a connection to AA archives where people can uh, find Bill Wilson's little talk on why he liked experience in the 12th step better than uh, <laughs> than uh, awakening. It's funnier than hell. And I, uh, I think you'll enjoy it. Oh, I'd, I'd like to see that myself. Yeah, I'll put it in the show notes uh, and it'll, it'll start lots of lots of uh, heated discussion at 12 step meetings, which is always yes. good. It's always good. <laughs> Purgation, heat. Pur <laughs> Purgation, we're going to burn. <laughs> Um, and the last one, of course, is union. And that, he says, is beyond description. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You really can't talk about it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's I think it's very, very much like we were talking about earlier, you know, this thing of uh, it is so intimate that, um, right. you know, to be united with something, to be in union with something is to know, you know. And, and the ego is quieted. The, it, it, it has to be. <laughs> yeah, it has to be because it knows it's in the presence of the divine and it's rightly related to the divine. And that's, well, that's the why, union that it was made for. Yeah. Well, that's why I think that, that, uh, that, that drugs are so dangerous because if it puts you into a, a yeah. condition <laughs> of illumination, bypassing purgation, you, you take your dirt in with you and you can burn it, burn in a way that does your yeah. harm. You know, that's right. There are clear steps here, and and uh, you can't you know, skip. Them. You can't skip one. Not without doing harm to the instrument itself. That's you know? right. Yeah. yeah. Well said. That's well said. So, uh, so that's the end of <laughs> part one, and uh, we, we, we'll go uh, somewhat quickly through uh, part two. And this asks: Is the experiment a practical possibility? And and in chapter one. Uh, the question is, well, what specifically do you do? And he starts off in his usual funny manner. He says, well, you can become a monk or you can go join an ashram. And, and therein, you would follow an established path and be led by experienced teachers. But, it's, but he then asks, well, that's not a real practical possibility for most people. So the question, the more modern question is, is I think, how do you become a monk or enlightened in the modern world? What form could that look like? And he says, well, you got to follow a set of rules. And, and all religions are, 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 are there to, in a sense, give you those rules. You know, and, and he lists them, you know, the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, the uh, teachings of Christ, the New Testament, the Quran, the Bhagavad Gita, the Buddhist path. Uh, the, 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 they're helpful. Do you yeah. pick one and go deep? I think it, I think of Joseph Campbell, you know, he, he, he went all over the map. Uh, he too was a spiritual mongrel. And towards the end of his life, he, he did say he wished that he had taken one and gone deep. That, that really impressed me. Uh, some comments on that, Matt? Uh, yeah. Well, I think one of the great things when you read them, you know, this is broken out as you went, you mentioned some of them, the Decalogue, which is the Ten Commandments and the mm -hmm. precepts of Christ, which I've never seen written like that before. And I found extremely mm -hmm. useful. It's interesting in the creed, in the Christian mm -hmm. creed, you know, yeah. they go from the birth to the death and crucifixion and they totally skip what's in the middle. Yeah. And what's yeah. in the middle is what Tom has in the book. I mean, this is where yeah. the transformation happens. Yes. Yeah. yeah. When you look at them, you look at the, the, the yamas and niyamas and even the poor noble truths. One of the things that you see is, right. is like, it's so repetitive. Like there is just, there are certain aspects of them that you, you can't get around in a way. This is why I feel that we're so lucky in the program to have four absolutes, because uh, although it's very helpful to have this commentary and a spell out, 
Right. Uh, it really, if you want, if you wanted to take these things and just and to boil them down, in my opinion, you've got the four absolutes. Yeah, me know? too. If there were a fifth one, it would be the courage to do them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the one I'd, uh, I would add. <laughs> but uh, no, they're there. They're there. And I, I, I think you're right. I will actually do that as a little exercise because I think each one of these in each of the different faiths uh, can be covered under, under those absolutes. Yeah, I really think so too. Yeah. I really do. The other thing I think is, is good to know is essentially there, there are those that join the religious life um, but primarily he's speaking, what he's speaking to here is, is what you would call the householder. Right. You know, and in that sense, there, there are two, basically two types of persons, those who are householders and those like Christ, Christ makes reference to, uh, you know, birds have nests and fox have holes, but I have no place to put my head. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a person who is saying then I, I, he's outside of being a householder. The, there's very few people that are in that condition. We are, we are in a householding situation, meaning that we learn this in, in the laboratory, if you will, of a family unit on the job with bosses right. and, and, you know, uh, just, you know, in responsibilities and so on and so forth. This is where we learn about God. Certain yeah. people are able, you know, do that in a, in a monastery somewhere or, an ashram or something, a majority of us are to do it in, in our own homes. And that makes us no less, you know, spiritual, or it makes our, our need to reach God no less important. And there's no guarantee that going to the ashram or to the, or, you know, to the monastery is really going to change you anyway. Well, I've been around the 12 steps for a while, and you've been in much yeah. longer than I have. And I guarantee you've met people along the way that tried those things uh, yeah. to try to, to try to rescue themselves or oh, sure. get away from, and it's, it's a disaster. Right. You know, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Been there, done that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember your story. Yeah. Uh, in the second chapter, um, he gets into the, the practical, uh, and, and he says, the practical means practice. Uh, and, and Tom's suggestion is, and that's what we're talking about right now, begin where you are. Yeah. Yep. Begin where you are. Not, if I could only be over there, I'd be different. Yep. If I could only be in that place, I'd be different. Yep. You know, no, it is where you are that you must begin. The practice, the practice. Yeah. And, uh, and he starts with a, a wonderful book that I know you're familiar with, and uh, we'll put this in the notes as well, but Practice the Presence of God by Brother Lawrence. Very important book. Uh, very simple, oh, yeah. deceptively simple. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, again, this whole section is about, you know, what do you do? What do and, you do? And when you get on this way of life, you want to know what, what to do. You know, yeah. that's one of those questions you ask early on. Right. Uh, you find your answer. In this sense, in this in this particular source, this this book, the practice mm -hmm. of the presence of God, which which was was an Oxford group, you know, really used this book, and they passed it on to early AA for sure. You know, this mm -hmm. is a book that er that everybody <laughs> read in early AA. You know, I, I recommend everybody read it for sure. And I and I also the description that Tom gives in here, it, it's really helped me very much. You know. Um, just to, to try to practice remembering God's presence. Let's you know? go through the three points that he, he, he yeah. references on the book. So the first, you're just touching on it. Recollection, remembering, remembering yeah. God's yeah. presence. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I, you know, I often think uh, the word uh, remember is, you know, you, we're, we're, we happen to be part of a fellowship, you know, right. you're a member of it, but you're a member of it when, whenever you, you, you actually remember <laughs> that you are a member of it, yep. that you remember that you're an addict and that you, yeah. that you need help when you, if you don't, if you don't have that, you know, that, then you're not on this thing. I mean, it really depends right. on your, on your awareness yeah. of it. Yeah. How awake so, you are. 
Right. Pause when agitated and remember. Yeah. Remember. Yep. Uh, the second yep. one is conversation. Uh, and to me, this is two-way prayer. Enter into a simple dialogue with God. Um, yes. You know, yes. Uh, to speak to and to be spoken to as well. Um, it's a conversation. I remember a, a conversation, speaking of conversation, I had with a, a sponsor when I first yeah. got in. And, and he was saying to me that a, he said that, you know, uh, I don't know what I did. I was talking about something I had done wrong. He said, do you think you would do that if I was in the room? Yeah. And I said, well, definitely not, you know. Right. And he said, uh, the problem with us is that we do not remember God's presence. If if we remembered his presence, which is which is a reality that is there, right. we would we would never do these things, right, you right. know, and um, <laughs> that's what this thing is about is to is to remember. That's you know? right. Um, and and conversation is an aid in in remembering him. Just like we talked about reason earlier, you can't you can't be neutral here. This is a this is a faculty of the human person. We're, we're going to have a conversation and all day long, I might have a conversation, which is kind of frightening and maybe with a resentment, you mm -hmm. know, oh, this person, uh, they shouldn't have done that. Oh, who do they think they are? Do they know who I am? There's a whole conversation that goes on yeah. under the surface. Yeah. To have one, to cease having one with oneself and to have one with God. That is way it's everything. When you, that that's, is everything. That's the voice. That's the voice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, comes through different faiths and uh, traditions, but it's it's always uh, a listening, a yeah. listening, and a being transformed by the voice. Yeah. You know, and bringing it into reality. And the third one um, is sustained awareness. Yeah. Sustained yeah. Again. Awareness. Yeah. And to have it a sustained awareness, to be awake. Right. Uh, this is the aim. And we've got, the, you know, it's amazing, but we have these great examples of people who have, who have had that experience, you know, like a brother Lawrence. Right. He, he had, you know, he conversed with God, was aware of him pretty much his whole life. The same thing with uh, the pilgrim, you know, it was just yeah. what a life. <laughs> and, and it takes practice. It's constant yeah. practice. Yeah. Yep. And if, if, if I try to skip that, it's, you know, it's like, well, I got sober 10 years ago or 15 years ago. So what? What happened yeah. yesterday? Yeah. What's it like at home? This, this, is, this is where spirituality is real, or it's, it's just as false, and I'm just as asleep as I was uh, when I was drinking or drugging. Yeah. He says here, he says, uh, do not be discouraged when time after time you undergo the humiliating experience of falling asleep spiritually and yeah. simply forgetting that God is here and that we may converse with him always. This kind of sleep lies close to the root of the fall of man. It is embarrassing, but the difficulty is made bearable by the realization that you share it with the rest of the human race. Mm -hmm. You know, we're in this yeah. thing together. That's right. That's <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, if, if I'm at a meeting with six or seven people, maybe one of us will be awake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, and that's the assignment. We have a, a close group. The assignment we have is wake up the fellows that are around us and vice that's versa. Right. Yeah. Know? Right. The next, the next section is, uh, and I'm not going to get into this in, in depth because we'll do this in another one, but the practice of ego reduction, which is lifelong. You know, it's not a, I, I came in, you know, in 85 or 92, whenever I got sober, it might have been. No, that's when you begin the journey. But the ego yeah. reduction is ongoing. And if you can tune into that, then, then recovery becomes an adventure. You yeah. Know? I mean, this, we've mentioned it before, but the thing of the the ego, it's always re you know? That's right. Uh, and, and, and you think, oh, well, I've been at this thing a while. I don't have to worry about it as much. No, the more vitality that you've yeah. been given, the more that 
you know, the ego has to make a mess with, you know, <laughs> That's right. That's so, right. you know, to whom much is given, much is expected. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the final, the final part of, of, uh, of this chapter is the practice of watching. And yeah. I want to turn you loose on that because that's one of the real main gifts Tom's work has given to me to watch and pray. It just yeah. brought that to new life. So if you could speak on that, I'd appreciate it. First of all, it's, it's useful to, to, to see that, that all of the 12 steps are organized in the, in the fashion of, of watching and praying. All of the inventory steps precede the prayer steps. You know, the fourth and fifth step, then you do six and seven. The tenth step, then you do the eleven. The watching and the way that he has it here. And when he was working on the 12 and 12, he, he called it a spot check inventory. Right. Um, but watching here, what he means by it, there are, there are three aspects to watching. The first one is discernment. Is this, is this uh, thought something that is, um, is it good for me? Is this a thing mm. that, I sh- that I should give, that I should a- allow to, to occur? Does it pass this, the test of the absolutes, in effect? And, it, and again, it comes back to, we keep talking about the truth, but discernment is just an, mm. is an aspect of, of the truth. Mm. Is this, you know, when this thing comes in and says, oh, that SOB, whatever, yeah. right? When that thought comes and something says, um, maybe this is, maybe I'm pre- being resentful here, right? There is, mm. there is discernment as, as to, to discern whether this thing is, is harmful or, or right for you. In the Christian it's, tradition, they call it discernment of spirits. Yeah. It's listening yeah. attentively, which spirit is, is, is coming at me. Yeah. 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 The second part is um, self-observation. You know, when we, we, we keep going back to the, to the Adam experience of where he became yeah. identified with his own body. Right. Uh, it's just to, to see a thing. To see yourself not as as a, a subject, but as an object, mm-hmm. you know. The, the, there's a, a thing, an, yeah. Yeah, and there's an analogy mm-hmm. in the big book where it talks about um, taking inventory. It says, you know, if you're if you're a grocer, I'm going to expound on it a little bit in my own way. But you know, if you're if you're a grocer in a grocery store and and you're going through the cans of soup and you find a dented one, right? You, you you're just writing down on the paper what what you find and and that that one gets chalked down as as uh spoiled and you throw it in the garbage you don't cry about it you don't try to fix it you don't put it in the back of the row you know you just you just it just gets tossed out you know <laughs> um self-observation is just to, is to see a thing in that way where you're not identified with it you're not a, you, you you're not identified with yourself right um the last, the last is, is non-consent, you know, that, that you don't, all addiction relates to ingestion, that you don't, that you don't consent to a thought, that you don't consent to a drink, you know, that mm-hmm. you don't let this thing in and that you, you practice watching, you know, is, is a combination of those three things uh, yeah. throughout your day. Yeah. When you, when and I know there's this line that means so much to both of us, but yeah. uh, as he says, you know, the one of the purposes of watching is so you know what to pray for. That's so beautiful. You know? I mean, it's it's everything. And if you don't watch, you don't know what the hell to pray for. So I, if I, I if I start yeah. off with prayer and I haven't watched, I'm going to go in the wrong direction. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And it's it, it's it, it's so interesting how often. I can find myself in that state of mind. I had a situation about a year ago I was working on my job and there was a, there was a, a lust temptation that I wasn't expecting. I was out in the pasture and it turned out the, uh, I work on a farm, but the, there's a, yeah. a house that, that was over a fence. I didn't even, I didn't know who lived there or anything. And there was an attractive female over there. And I started to pray. I was saying the Jesus prayer and I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. I'm praying and I, I could just still feel it like, going through my, you know, circulating through my veins, you yeah. know, and, and I, I texted somebody to let them know, you know, I was under temptation, but I was going to keep praying. And after a while, it dawned on me that I, 
I hadn't really, I didn't practice w- watching. I mean, I, I was aware or, or I was observant of myself enough to know that, that I, there was a temptation, but mm-hmm. I hadn't really made a, you know, a, an inner stop and, 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 uh, you know, withheld the feeling and thought and, and tried to clearly see this thing. This is just lust. Right. This is all this is. And when I had done that, yeah. then I started to pray in a very different way that the, right. the thing went away. It like yeah. went away immediately. Right. It and wasn't it, that I was doing something wrong before necessarily. It's just that this, there is something to practice watching because it, it opens up the, the help of prayer in a whole new way. And, and, and every day, our life is filled with those kinds of opportunities. To, oh, to, yeah. Yeah, to meet God or to meet the ego. As uh, we were talking about Brother Lawrence, you know, one of his famous quotes is, uh, useless thoughts spoil all. Mm. You know, and, and everybody is just bombarded with useless thoughts right. all day long. Yeah. And you watch, you can watch for them. The big book talks about watching right. too. Right. You know, watching for selfishness, self-centeredness, and self-seeking, dishonest yeah. behavior. You know, you watch. Yeah. Watch and pray. Yeah. Watch and pray. And one last thing, if you don't mind me saying this. Go I think, for it, man. Uh, step 10 is it's a reference to time. It says promptly. Yes. And uh, you, there's something very critical to, to the time of it. You know, if you let a thing go, you can do yourself harm. So you want to, you want to admit something as, as promptly as you can. But when you get into the big book and you read about how to practice step 10, it doesn't talk about, and this is important to the watching thing. It doesn't mm-hmm. talk about admitting a thing after you did it. It talks about watching for it before you do it. Yeah. That's a whole different thing. Uh-huh. It, it, is, it is to know yourself in advance it is to know your weaknesses to know you know what you're capable of doing right to be aware of where this will lead yeah and to be aware of that within you we kind of do that with the drink or the drug we i think we kind of get to that place but you have to get to that place with your thinking as well yeah exactly it's good Mm -hmm. to admit a thing after you've done it it is 10 times better to watch for it in advance and to pray for help not to do it. There you go. There yeah. you go. Well, that's a wonderful note uh, to end on. So uh, again, uh, Matt, I want to thank you for uh, coming onto the podcast and, and sharing your, uh, your experience and your wisdom uh, with all of us. It's, it's been a real blessing uh, to me. And, and I think I know to many, so uh, really appreciate it. And next time, if you'll come back, if we haven't scared you off too much, uh, we're going to look at God's will and how to know it and how to do it. And I think that's uh, something that probably doesn't get quite enough attention. It's, it's, uh, it really has to become the focus of, of my daily life and not just uh, I did my third step once, but it's, it's a living reality. So I think Tom has a lot to teach us, and I'm looking forward to mm-hmm hearing your uh, your experience, strength, and hope with that, Matt. So thank you once again. Sure. My pleasure. Yeah. And I want to thank you guys for, uh, for listening. I hope this uh, was helpful. And uh, if it was, please drop us a line at twowayprayer at gmail.com. And if you want to get in touch with Matt, you can reach him through alladdictsanonymous at gmail.com or send me a note and I'll be happy to pass it on to him. So thank you once again for listening. Uh, God bless and keep coming back.